Hey everyone, this is Ross. In today's video, I want to talk to you guys about gooseberries. And what is a gooseberry? Well, it's these little guys right here. I compare them very similarly to grapes. They have a really smooth, crunchy exterior, kind of like a grape. And then when you get in there, it's also smooth on the inside. Really elegant piece of fruit, just like the grape. And uh, these guys are a bit tart though, also sweet, really good for fresh eating. And in my opinion, they're like an early grape and also extremely easy to grow. There's, it's just a very low maintenance tree, low maintenance bush guys that anybody can grow at home. They don't really take up a whole lot of space. You know, you're looking at maybe five foot by five foot or even six foot by six foot, depending on the variety. Yeah, you know, they're very easy to propagate. It's really as simple as just bending this cane down to the ground and it roots itself in the ground and you can then cut it over here once this area forms roots and you got yourself a new plant. So they're very easy to grow. Nothing really bothers them except for the birds. Uh, so you can see I have a net on them. Um, this particular bush is done fruiting right now, but there is a one in the front of the house in a different location that's uh, didn't get as much of a head start, and I think that's probably why there's less heat in that location. And that one's loaded, still with fruit that hasn't really ripened just yet. Um, the one in the front is called Trixia, and the one right here is called Hinomaki Red. And they turn red, almost a deep dark red. Uh, but I like to pick them a bit earlier, and there's a big debate with that. A lot of people in Europe love these things, because they grow so easily, and they're very common over there. Um, but the big debate is really when to pick them. Pick them later or pick them earlier. If you pick them later, in my experience, they seem to get more of a softer interior, more of a grainy pear-like interior that is not as pleasant to the mouth. And they also lose some of that tartness. Whereas if you pick them now when they're a bit green, but they're getting red and they're also a bit soft, um, you know, they're more of a smooth grape on the, in the, on the interior. So for me, I like them more like this. And they're really good. I mean, they even taste like kiwi. I think kiwi is a really good actual guess, a really good uh, comparison. So that one was a bit more ripe. And the interior was a bit kind of like, uh, like a piece of citrus. You know, it wasn't really firm like a grape is, but not necessarily on the way to a pear. You know, they're really good. And for me, they're actually better than blueberries and better than cherries, maybe even better than raspberries. I'm not entirely sure on that comparison, but you can see my grape vines here. And these are also table grapes, but they're European grapes. We've talked a lot about these grapes. You can see they got nice little clusters on them. It's gonna be a big year for grapes. They look very healthy. This vine is doing very well for its, I think, fourth year now. So this is awesome, but the point is, is that if you really love grapes, get yourself the gooseberry, because today it's not even July and I'm eating goose gooseberries. Whereas I'm gonna to have to wait until probably August to eat these grapes. Um, as big as they are and as full as they look, I'm probably going to have to wait quite a bit. So that fills a nice little gap in the season. You know, is to get yourself an earlier grape, get yourself a gooseberry. They're always reliable. There is no disease that bothers them here, but they do get affected by mildew. If you guys live in a really high mildew environment, it's in your area, you get lots of humidity. Um, you got to watch out for that, but also you can get disease resistant varieties of gooseberry. But what you're looking at right now is actually a muscadine grape. And this is a different type of grape that I find to be similar, actually more similar probably to the gooseberry in that they are also a grape, a different type of grape that's found native to the Southern United States. And um, they don't really have disease issues, even though this one's showing very light disease problems. 
Um, it's probably because the vine is a bit young, but this is a grape that fruits in the fall. So you've got yourself the gooseberry first, sometime in late June to July. Then you've got the European table grape in August, and you can have different varieties fruit at different times. And then you've got followed up by that is the the grape that uh, ripens in the fall, the muscadine grape. So for me, I think it's a no-brainer. I, I really do. These are like one of the best things you can grow in a backyard environment. You can't really get them in the store here in the United States. It just doesn't make sense, I think, not to not to grow them. You know, it's one of those things that's just so easy, fruits so heavily that it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And I'm gonna bring you guys over now to the gooseberry that is fruiting like crazy. So to show you guys the production because we're already done on the other one. And by the way, look at these blueberries, man. These blueberries are massive. And you can see the bird got to that one. Very rare though, it seems like so far this year, the birds are getting to any of them. Some of these, by the way, are like the size of my thumb, which is insane. Here's one right here I can pick. But anyway, back to this video. Here's another gooseberry right here, right next to the blueberry. I mean, there's no spacing at all with this. Really close together. You can see underneath these canes here is just tons of fruit. Look at that, guys. This is a very young bush. This bush has only been here for two years, I think. And it just grew really well last year. And of course, it's growing well really uh, nicely this year. You can see the nice shape of it. I'd say it's about maybe four foot wide right now by three feet tall. So that's pretty impressive. Maybe it, I think this might be its third year. This variety again is called Trixia and there's no thorns on the new growth, which is really nice to see. Easy to deal with, but on the old wood, there is some thorns. So not, not the biggest issue to really have to worry about, but what's nice about this one is the production, the color, the flavor. Uh, and that's kind of what I wanted to get at here is to show you guys that's, you know, what the production looks like. So anyway, guys, that is sort of the video on the gooseberry and what I kind of wanted to cover with you all. You know, there's not really else much to it other than just getting them established. They take a bit long to get established. The same thing with a lot of the ribes, you know, um, you know, the currants, the Josta berry, also the honeyberry and you know other kinds of smaller bushes they take a bit longer i think to get established but if you got soil that's really well mulched lots of organic material that holds a lot of water um, and you water them well if if you needed to you know they're going to take off they're going to do really well you know put some comfrey or some kind of nitrogen fixer near them i think they really like that um, but certainly i think it's the moisture level in the soil these bushes and lower growing plants are meant to be grown in the understory they don't they don't mind being grown in in um, in more shadier conditions and they like the wet soil that you normally find underneath the forest you know you're going to find a cooler environment a wetter soil down there and they're not going to have that crazy sun blasting on them really transfer uh transpirating those leaves right um, so anyway, guys, I want to thank you all for watching this one on gooseberries. I mean, that's, that's it in a nutshell, really. Uh, again, there's no reason not to grow them, I think. If you guys live in a colder zone, you can still grow them. I think if, even if you live in a warmer place, you can still grow them. So uh, check them out. All right, guys, take care. We'll see you for tomorrow's video. Have a good day, everybody.